All right, next question is from Connor God's Child McGregor. <laughs> says, uh, MMA question for Faraz. How to defend against a wrestler shot for a double leg? Should we sprawl or angle out, or what do you teach fighters? Sprawling and angling out is both good, okay? But the number one, the first thing I always teach is sprawling, because that's the worst case scenario. The guy grabbed my legs, I have to sprawl. That, when you get more advanced, you don't even need the sprawl anymore, you just angle out. But for those of you who are just starting off and defending against a wrestler, one of the things I like to do is I like to, sh I like to put my hands on my partner here like this. I don't like to sprawl from out here. I see a lot of people teach sprawl from out here. Good wrestlers won't shoot from that far. You know, there's very, very few wrestlers that can shoot from that far and still get the double leg. Some wrestlers are so explosive, they can shoot from this distance. Okay, but 99% of the wrestlers, they're gonna shoot from here. So whenever a guy's this close to me, there's an alarm bell that rings in my head and tells me, hey, this guy also now has the option to shoot. Whereas if I'm here and he shoots at me, I'm gonna make him pay. Like, I'll angle out, I'll knee him, I'll step off with a hook, I'll, I'll slam him down to the ground, I'll choke him. But when, he, when we're fighting, if we're fighting, I feel we're this close, there's a special little alarm that rings and says, hey, he's not trying, he's just trying to punch you. He could also grab your, your leg now. So what I like to do to get myself used to that, that angle is I come right here, I put my hands on my partner, and I tell my partner, shoot. Okay, so now I'm getting used to the, the distance. Now when Shane shoots here and he shoots, I'm going to face the head. Go ahead, shoot a double leg. Watch. See, I don't know which side he's going to shoot. But he put his head to my left side. I faced my, my body to the left side. I'm always facing the head. Okay, so watch here again. Now Shane shoots on the other side here, shoots on the other side. Yeah, see how I'm going to sprawl? I'm facing my head to the other side. Now, if you notice my body position here, if Shane were to keep driving, let's just back, let's back up real quick. Now. So watch here, my partner shoots. I face the head. If Shane keeps driving, keep driving. Look, keep driving. Look, he cannot take me to the fence. Go ahead, take me to the fence. We're going to keep spinning. See, shooting, shooting. We're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning. And, th and that's what I want because a lot of, uh, I see a lot of guys when they sprawl, shoot a double here, they try to go head on with their sprawl. They try to drive, but what's going on here now is I'm not deflecting Shane. If Shane keeps driving, he's gonna, he's gonna take me out. He's gonna take me down. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to deflect them with my hairs. So watch when he shoots, watch he shoots. Look how I deflect, see? How he put his hands on the mat because I'm deflecting him in a circular fashion. So. It's almost like you're doing a judo throw. See? When I use a judo throw, I'm using my hips to throw the guy. When Shane shoots right now, look, instead of using my hips to push him in the opposite direction, which would take a lot of muscle, and I've seen some wrestlers be successful with this, but in my opinion, it's a lot of muscle. Watch what I do with my hips here, watch. He shoots, watch, I face the head. See, and I knock him with my hip. My hip's coming in like a hook. So if you put your hand on this side, you'll get a better shot at it. Watch, boom. You see how I put his hands on the mat? And now look, I'm behind him, okay? So I'm not just doing a sprawl and trying to use my hip power to push him back. He's got a lot of power and momentum on his side. So I'm gonna use my hips here. He shoots, yeah, I shoot, my, I hit him with my hip. And look at my foot angles here, see? I got my feet ready to move. So if he keeps driving, drive right through me. So I'm always moving my feet. Go ahead, drive right through me. I'm using my feet, I'm pivoting and getting out of his way. When, some, when a wrestler shoots, you want to get out of his way. You don't want to just block him and push him back. Or else you just get run over. So if you want to sprawl, practice that one. And uh, after you know a few thousand reps, when the guy's shooting your legs, uh, they're going to be in for a big surprise. Well, there's an experiment that seems to indicate that a closed fist is safer than a uh, palm strike, open hand palm strike. What is your take on that? Open hand palm strike or a closed fist in a street fight? Well, I don't think about it like that. I think about it in terms of structures. If a, if a strong structure collides with a weaker structure, the weaker structure always breaks. Now, if you ever notice some guys, when they kick, they break their shin. You know, we've seen Anderson Silva break his shin, etc. The lower part of the shin bone is thinner than the upper part of the shin bone. So when, me, when I kick Shane and kick, Shane blocks, if I kick him with the lower part of my shin bone on the upper part of the shin bone, the thicker part of his shin bone, don't forget, this shin bone is very narrow and then it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and here's the most dense, most strongest part of your shin bone. We're both feeling the same amount of force. So some people say, hey, the guy who checks it is hurting the kicker even more. It all depends. When I'm kicking Shane, I'm gonna kick him, I'm gonna kick him low. You know, I'm gonna kick him low on the shin, or I'm gonna go through to the other leg. <coughs> when, my sh when I kick on my shin bone, if I hit him in the ribs, the shin bone is more dense than the rib bone, so it's gonna hurt him. If I hit with my foot on the elbow, if I hit with my foot here on the elbow, I'm gonna hurt my foot because the, the bones in the foot are more brittle than the elbow. The elbow is one of the toughest parts of your, your body. Hold your, hold your elbow here, Shane. Watch, if I kick Shane with my shin bone, I can kick him as hard as I want because my shin bone is tougher than his elbow. His, his forearm here is gonna start to hurt. So when the ties kick, 
And you know, a lot of times when, when the young kids, they kick, they hurt their foot. They're like, I tried to kick him to the body, I hurt my foot. You gotta kick with the shin bone. You know, I won't hurt myself. I'll kick him as hard as I want without a shin pad. So it's really about the structures. So if I punch a guy with my fist and I hit him on the top of the head, I'm gonna break my hand. I wanna hit him on the chin, the cheekbone, the nose. If I hit you with a palm strike, it's the same thing. If I hit him on top of the head, I'm gonna break my palm as well. Okay, the palm, the head is the toughest part of your body. The heel, the elbow, the upper part of your shin, these are the toughest bones. The knuckles are not that tough. They're tough enough, so you gotta be careful where you're hitting. You wanna hit the ribs, chin, cheek, nose, not the head. Avoid the head at all costs, or else you'll break your hand, whether you use palm or fist. So next question is, today I had my first proper sparring session with the guys at my gym, and I was getting beaten up pretty bad. I found that once our teacher said go, I froze and forgot all the things I've been learning. <laughs> and looking back, there are many moments where I realized I could have done this or that. So I want to ask how to calm myself before fighting and during sparring. Thanks. Well, first off, don't, don't feel bad about that. It's happened to everybody. It happens to me. It happens to GSP. When he hasn't sparred for a long time, he gets in there and he forgets everything he's learned. It happens to everybody. Um, this is what I call making technique instinctual. You know, you go on the bag and you know how to throw this hook and you throw out and you know how to do this. You think you know it. And I tell my students, no, you know about it. You know how to mimic it. But you only know it when you can do it in any situation, in a high pressure situation. If I wake you up in the middle of the night and you arm bar me, I'll tell you, yeah, you know arm bars, you know. But if you have to be in a perfect, serene, calm scenario and you're, you have to be in your, in your gym to feel comfortable and do these arm bars, they're not instinctual yet. You know, you should be able to do your arm bars, your punches, your kicks in any situation. In front of people, in the dark, in the street, uh, hanging off a cliff, it should be, if it's instinctual, if you've done it enough, if you have enough experience, you can't help yourself but doing it. So for me, what I think is you're still a little bit inexperienced, be patient. If you keep doing the reps and you keep sparring, uh, you'll get there. In my opinion, to, to, for you to get there, just check your ego at the door, you know. Get your 10,000 hours of practice, the skills will come, be patient. Don't judge yourself at every turn, you're gonna, you're gonna fatigue yourself psychologically. What do you think, Shane? I agree 100%, it's with, it's with anything, you gotta be instinctual with it, like picking up a guitar. Van Halen can pick it up and play without thinking, but when you first start, you have to make sure your hands are on the right, right chords before you start strumming, so it's just putting in the time and effort, you gotta make sure that it becomes instinctual, second like nature. All right, guys, thanks for watching. You have to check out Faraz's channel. It's got a ton of information on there, fight breakdowns, uh, nutrition, fitness, mixed martial arts. Link is in the description below. And uh, we were talking a little bit about coming out to, to the TriStar Gym and training, right? Tell yeah, I, wanna, I would love to have uh, Shane over, you know, live in the dorms, TriStar dorms, go through a training camp and uh, maybe get uh, Shane a Jiu-Jitsu Super Fight or something like that, you know, put him through the paces, give him the old TriStar uh, experience and uh, take you guys along with us and show you what we do there. Yeah, what do you guys think? Comment below if you'd like to see me training with Frost at his gym up in Canada and competing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, something I've never done before. So let us know. And again, subscribe to this man, please, I beg of you. All right, I want to see 500,000 subscribers on his channel when I go over and look. All right, until next time, I'm Shane. This is, uh, this is Frost. Coach Frost, I'll have you here. <laughs> until next time, right, guys. See you later. Cool.